Good morning, White Shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's MarkWithGeorgeTune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. Well, what is Second Cup? Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information the viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning and welcome to the February 5th, 2024 episode of Second Cup how are you this morning? I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I've got Tim Hortons. Uh, <laughs> that's a great coffee. I really enjoy that. It's right up there with Dunkin' Donuts for me. I really, really like it as a as a as a good go-to uh, reliable cup of coffee. It really is terrific. And I'm using my uh, Nerd Dogs coffee mug. I don't know if you've <laughs> you've probably seen this on the Monday morning mailbag before. A bunch of uh, Hound dogs, Labradors and hound dogs with uh, nerd kind of eyeglasses on, you know, with the uh, <laughs> with the duct tape uh, on the uh, center bar of the uh, the glasses between the two lenses, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a terrific, terrific uh, coffee mug. Nerd dog. So I'm enjoying that this morning. And again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. We got a bright, sunny day today. My gosh, it is going to be an early spring because the groundhog said early spring. He did not see his shadow, so I'm going with that. And at the time I'm recording this, it is a beautiful sunny day, and we're going to have a rather mild week ahead here in Northeast Ohio. Probably by Wednesday, it's going to be about uh, 45 to 50 degrees, so I'm looking forward to that. And <laughs> groundhog said early spring. I'm going with that. Now, when I was a kid, I always I always looked forward to Groundhog Day, and I always wanted to know what the groundhog said. Uh, because I was by that time of the year, I was already getting tired of the snow and the cold. And uh, my mother would always say, it doesn't matter what the groundhog says, Mark. We always have six more weeks of winter, meaning the season, the winter season. You know, it's spring is not going to be here until six weeks. Uh, but of course, we're all speaking of uh, a nice, milder end of the winter, meaning an early spring. And I think that's what we're going to have. I sure hope so, because uh, it looks beautiful out there. And uh, at the day that this airs, it's going to be a nice, sunny day. And uh, yeah, the weather is going to be very, very warm and agreeable in, in comparison to what it could be. So I hope it's fair weather and warm temperatures where you're at. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. We have some really interesting topics to go over this morning, some things that came in at the last minute. That's why we do Second Cup, because we get some last-minute uh, correspondence and heads-up uh, from viewers, that sort of thing. And uh, we like to broadcast them uh, on the Second Cup podcast, kind of tack them on, because the uh, Monday morning mailbag is already completed. It's been uploaded. It's been scheduled. And Second Cup acts as a really nice bookend to the Monday morning mailbag. Uh, it allows us to discuss some additional topics concerning the traditional wet shave, new wet shaving gear, sales that might be on the horizon or just right around the corner or ending very, very soon that we weren't able to include in the Monday morning mailbag. So it's been a terrific vehicle to get out some additional information after the Monday morning mailbag has already been uh, ready for publication. And my thanks to all the listeners and viewers out there for your great contributions to the uh, Second Cup podcast. Plus, I'm having a really, really fun time putting together the podcast, learning how to edit the audio together 
Uh, I really enjoy that aspect of it. Uh, and just in case you want to start your own podcast, you've been thinking about it, I'm using a program called Audacity. And Audacity is free to download. It's open source. And uh, it really is very, very powerful. It'll allow you to do some really, really neat things in combining audio. You can fade things. You can drop the uh, musical audio in the background, like you hear in my opening, with just a couple of clicks. So I've been uh, learning a few uh, uh, tips and tricks <laughs> uh, with various tools that are available. I've only scratched the surface, but uh, having a lot of fun with it. And I also use it for additional vocals uh, that I have to maybe drop in for the Monday morning mailbag, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, it's really been a great tool. So Audacity, uh, in case you're thinking about uh, starting your own podcast or you know someone who wants to start a podcast and they don't know what software program to use, Audacity. It's, it's free to download and it really is quite powerful. And uh, I've had a lot of fun uh, learning how to use it. It can be a bit clunky at first, to be perfectly honest with you, but once you start learning some of the moves, uh, it gets easier and easier, just like any other software application out there. Uh, I know there are probably some other audio editing programs out there that are probably a little more fluid, probably have a little bit uh, better uh, ease of use, uh, more, um, uh, I guess you could say, easy to use um, a GUI, uh, a graphic user interface. Uh, but uh, Audacity is pretty darn good considering the price uh, of it being free. So that's what I've been using, and I've really, really uh, enjoyed learning how to edit all the audio together for this podcast. So eh, a little bit of inside baseball there for you. So uh, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Oh, by the way, if you're listening to this podcast on your way into work, thanks very much for the lift. And let me know if you are uh, commuting to your, uh, your place of work this morning and you listen to the Second Cup podcast. I really would be interested in that. So leave a comment below uh, and let me know if you listen to Second Cup uh, on your morning commute. And if you do, thanks very, very much for that. Or maybe you listen to it on the way home. I know there's one viewer in France who said that he, uh, he watches the Monday morning mailbag on his way home on the train. <laughs> I thought that was really, really neat. So uh, whether you're uh, taking me along on your morning commute or you're wrapping up your day with me here on the Second Cup, thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below uh, what your routine is with Second Cup. I really would appreciate it. All right, uh, let's pay a few bills and we'll get the show started. Well, we've been talking about the Mula R89. Thanks again to Mark Bagwell for sending the razor along to the channel and allowing me to share with all the viewers out there. It's been an absolutely splendid razor to shave with. And as I've mentioned before, you would be hard pressed to nick yourself with a Mula R89. It's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful razor. Perfect for beginners and experienced wet shavers will really appreciate it as well. Uh, that brings us to a question from viewer Abine Samant. Hi, Abi, How are you? Uh, and he writes, Hi, Mark. Hope you're doing well. I just bought my ticket for the Maggards meetup in April. My buddy Cress and I will make the three and a half hour drive from Canada to see it all and probably spend too much on things we don't need. <laughs> oh, well, once you fall down the wet shaving rabbit hole, you'll never get out. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, but it's a really great hole to fall down into. <laughs> Absolutely, it's fantastic. Uh, he continues here, I do have a question I'm hoping you or your listeners could help me with. What is the difference between the Mula R89 and the Edwin Jagger DE89? Do they have the same head? Did they develop it together but market it separately? Or is it just coincidence? They both have 89 as part of the razor nomenclature. Uh, it'll be a real blast in April in Adrian, Michigan with my fellow wet shaving nerds and wet shaving brothers and sisters. Maybe I can get a selfie with you. Cheers, Abby. Yeah, Abby, absolutely. Let's get a picture together. Absolutely. Looking forward to meeting you. And I appreciate all the wonderful support that you've given the channel over the years. Thank you very, very much. Now, uh, in order to answer your question, I went to uh, viewer Mark Bagwell. 
because he has a lot of great background and knowledge regarding this. And we have discussed this before in the past. And I happened to talk to him just last night, and I asked him this question. So all credit goes to Mark Bagwell for this answer. And I know that there might be some other details uh, to fill in here and there. And if any of the listeners or viewers out there uh, have any additional information that may have been uh, left out accidentally, uh, please, uh, you know, post it below. I would really be interested in hearing some of those additional uh, details. Now, uh, according to Mark Bagwell, Edwin Jagger was in the automotive industry, uh, uh, chroming automobile parts, and they were looking to diversify. And uh, Mula was a brush company looking to expand uh, their uh, line of uh, wet shaving products. Uh, and because research and development can be very expensive, the two companies somehow came together and decided to fund the uh, research and development of the razor head known as the DEA-9 and the RA-9 together. They shared that cost together. And out of that cooperation in research and development came that, that R89, DEA-9 razor head. And Edwin Jagger manufactures the DEA-9 razor head at their manufacturing facilities in Sheffield, England. And Mula uh, uh, manufactures the R89 razor head in their manufacturing facilities in Saxony, Germany. Uh, and uh, from what I understand, from what Mark Bagwell was telling me, uh, the razor heads on the R89 and the DE89 are identical. They're identical dimensionally. Uh, their geometry is identical. They're, they are the same razor head. Now, from what I can see, uh, the big difference is, is the variety of handles offered by each company that will change up the way the razor head shaves, the approach of the shave. Edwin Jagger has many, many different razor handles. They have different uh, sizes, shapes, weights, lengths, that sort of thing. And uh, some are uh, very ornate. Uh, they have different knurling. And uh, that kind, those kinds of qualities will change up uh, the way that razor head uh, works. For instance, uh, I have my DEA-9 right here in front of me, and uh, next to it, I have the Kelvin, which is available on Amazon, and the Kelvin is uh, a shorter handled uh, uh, razor handle uh, that goes, that pairs up with the DEA-9 razor head, and that shorter handle does change up the, uh, the, the way that razor head shaves uh, a bit, and, uh, you know, the, the, it's also a lighter weight as well. Uh, now, on the Mula side of things, they have the uh, standard uh, Mula R89. Uh, the handle that I have is just absolutely gorgeous. It's, it really is very, very grippy without being sticky. Uh, it is beautifully chromed. And you can also get an R89 Grande, which is a, a longer handle with a, a larger diameter. So it's going to be a little bit heavier. That will change up uh, the way that... Uh, razor head shaves a bit. Uh, they also offer the uh, R89 twist, which takes that razor head and turns it into a two-piece razor, where the base plate is attached to the handle, and the cap drops in, and the bottom knob uh, uh, enables you to twist and turn and tighten down that threaded center post uh, to attach the cap to the base plate and uh, clamp down on the blade. So, uh, yeah, they offer a, a variety of different handles uh, for, the, uh, for the razor head, for the 89 razor head. And uh, they developed it together, and they manufacture it in their respective facilities. And they offer a, a variety of options to go with that razor head in the way of uh, handles. The, 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 the length of the handle, the weight of the handle, the shape of the handle, uh, the material that the handle is made out of, uh, that, you know, those sorts of things. So that's kind of the long and short of it, Abby, as, as far as uh, the difference between the DEA-9 and the R-89. Uh, no difference in the razor head, but there are tremendous differences in the, in the handles that are attached to that razor head. And again, that, that'll change up the approach of the, uh, of the shave, uh, certainly uh, from weight and length of the handle. And I will say this, 
both of these uh, razors, I'm looking at the R89 in my uh, left hand and I'm looking at the DE89 in my right hand. And uh, both are just absolutely beautiful, beautiful razors. And uh, I'm looking at them and you know, I gotta tell you something right now. I mean, I'm looking at them right now and I am looking at the cap on the DE89 uh, versus the R89. And you know what? That cap on the R89 seems to be a little thicker at the crown. Just a little thicker at the crown. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's my imagination. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. It just, it just, maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, but it just seems, it just seems that way. I'm going to have to do a side-by-side -side comparison and show it on camera. And uh, I've often mentioned, too, that uh, to me, uh, since getting the R89, I'm looking at the chroming compared to the DE89, and I think the chroming on the R89 is a little better. Now, there are going to be people out there who say, no, 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 it's the other way around, because Edwin Jagger has been known for chroming uh, different uh, metal parts. Uh, so they have an expertise uh, on, on that. And because they've been doing it for years. And that very well could be, but I'm telling you, this R89 has a beautiful chroming job. They're both good. It's just that there's something about the R89 that uh, it's just a little different. And you know what? I'm going to look at uh, the Kelvin razor head compared to the uh, R89. Yep. You know what? I'm going to show this on camera. There seems to be a little bit of difference. You know, we're told that they're identical. I'm seeing a little bit of difference in the thickness of the cap uh, towards the crown area. And again, I hope my eyes aren't playing tricks on me, but that's the way I'm looking at it. And I'm switching these razors up from right hand to left hand, left hand to right hand. Uh, so now the R89 is in my right hand and the Kelvin is in my left hand. And you know what? <laughs> I don't see any difference. Uh, that R89 cap looks a little thicker at the crown. And I wonder if that is changing up that shave ever so slightly when compared to the DE89. So maybe they've done something to it at Mula just a little bit. I don't know. But that's the history of it as uh, Mark Bagwell uh, communicated it to me. So I hope that answers your question, Abby, and to all the other listeners out there who have been wondering about this. And if anyone else has some additional information regarding the uh, 89 razor head and its development, please comment below and let us know. Hey, Abby, thanks again for a really, really terrific question. And I look forward to seeing you and everyone at the Maggard Meetup in Adrian, Michigan on April 20th, 2024. Viewer Philip Sharp asked the following question. In your opinion, how well do you think Boone Beard products would sell in the United States? That's a very, very good question, Philip. Thank you so much for asking it. I think Boone Beard would do very well in the United States. They have these wonderful, exotic, otherworldly sort of ingredients from the South African area incorporated into their shave soaps that really deliver a wonderful, wonderful lather, both in their tallow-based soaps and also their glycerin-based soaps. Uh, I've had a chance to use both. I like the scent profiles, and I love the lathers that both of those shave soaps uh, develop. Really, really terrific, terrific stuff. So uh, when I saw ostrich oil on the label as one of the ingredients, and it developed this beautiful, beautiful lather, I was impressed. And I thought, my gosh, it's got to be the ostrich oil in there, something I've never used. So I think that quality, that aspect of the Boone Beard Shave Soap, uh, containing ingredients that we don't normally find in a lot of shave soaps produced in other parts of the world, uh, here in the American market, the United States market, I think would really, really sell very, very well because it's something different and you're getting a really good quality lather. You're getting a lather that gives you wonderful protection, wonderful glide, terrific scent, and again, it's, it's something new and different. And I think that's what a lot of wet shavers appreciate. They, they like to go out and find 
uh, something a little new and different to change up their traditional wet shave. And I think this one would be a very welcome addition in their shave den. Of course, your mileage may vary, but I have found that their glycerin shave soaps and their tallow-based shave soaps are wonderful. And they happen to offer some of their scent profiles in both. They'll offer a, a, a nice, soft, tallow-based soap, and then they'll offer a harder glycerin-based uh, uh, soap. Uh, and uh, they, got they have really, really nice price points for their shave soaps. Uh, they give you a lot. And uh, yeah, all around, I think, I think their products would do very, very well in the United States. Uh, I've been impressed with them. And again, having these ingredients sourced from the South African area and other countries in that part of the world uh, makes it very, very unique. And I think that's a, a big selling marketing point as well that I think that they could capitalize on. So uh, that's kind of the long and short of it for me regarding Boonda Beard. Uh, I, I am a little biased, though, because I did get a really generous sampling from Dr. Edward de Villiers. And when it arrived, I was so happy to see it. It was absolutely wonderful. And uh, we've had some other viewers who have used these shave soaps, and uh, they've come away with some very, very nice, positive comments regarding it. So... Um, yeah, I think they would. Uh, I think these shave soaps would do would would do very very well in the United States. Uh, something new, something different to try, and I think uh, that's really kind of uh, what we do in the wet shaving world, isn't it? We like to try all these different shave soaps, you know, different balms, different aftershaves to try to change up our shave a little bit. Uh, you know, create a little bit of excitement in the shave den with something new and different. And uh, when it's something that we really like and appreciate it and becomes a new favorite, you know, that sort of thing. And I think Boone de Beard would just fit in perfectly with that routine. So, yeah, I think Boone de Beard would do very, very well. And I sure hope they are able to um, make their way into the American market and offer their wares here because I think a lot of wet shavers would certainly embrace their product line. I really like it. I like their tallow soaps. I like their glycerin soaps. And, and you know, they, they offer a wide variety of shave soaps uh, in both bases uh, with, a, with terrific, terrific scents. And they've, again, they've got these really exotic, different kinds of ingredients that we've never experienced before. And I found them to just be delightful. So thanks for the question, Philip. Really do appreciate it. And I sure hope uh, Boone Beard makes its way into the uh, United States market so that other wet shavers can experience how wonderful their uh, wet shaving products are. Thanks again, Philip. Really do appreciate it. I got this message from viewer Christopher Devine, and he wrote, Hello, Mark. I'm a huge fan of both the 3MB and Second Cup. Well, thanks very much for that, Christopher. Thanks for tuning in to both. I really do appreciate that. On the most recent Second Cup podcast, you mentioned that you were going to add one or two Phoenix Shaving Monster Slant Razors to your collection, and you included the filament among the models you were considering. Keep in mind that while the Monster Slant models differ only in color, the filament appears to have a different slant and twist angle as well. This could be the perfect excuse to add one to your shopping cart. Wow, Christopher, thank you very, very much for this. You are incredibly perceptive, more perceptive than I am. Uh, I contacted uh, Douglas Smythe at Phoenix Shaving, and he wrote back and said, yes, the filament is a different razor. I try to clarify that on the sales page, but people tend to lump them together because they look so much alike. One is a slant, the other a double slant. That's also why it doesn't have a monster name. The filament is more aggressive. Both, however, are based on the Fasan razors. The original Bakelite slants we did way back were the same geometry as the filament. Great question and hope this helps. Absolutely. Again, Christopher, you are spot on. Very perceptive. Thank you so much for pointing this out. And uh, folks, just to give you a little more information on the filament razor offered by Phoenix Shaving, uh, it is based on the Fasan Twist Razor. And as they write on the product page, the filament open comb slant design is inspired by one of my favorite vintage razors of all time, 
the Fasan Twist. That's spelled F-A-S-A-N, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. I absolutely love that razor, but it's hard to find and can be expensive to pick up when you do find one. And if you're not familiar with Bakelite, who wants to take a gamble at the current antique razor price? Yeah, they're very, very expensive. So once again, we have gone back and plucked a rare gem from history in an effort to offer it at a fair and reasonable price so that the newbie and old dog collector alike can give this bad boy a go. We made sure the post was the standard 1032 thread so that handles can be mixed and matched with most of your favorite components. Though I do recommend you hang with the whole package before you switch it up. Unlike its metal cousin, the razor requires slight pressure, but very, very slight. As for the presumed learning curve, you should have it mastered by the end of a three-pass shave. A slant need not be about weight, but finesse and angle. Well, I have used the Monster Slants, and I absolutely love them, and slight pressure, and they are lightweight, but slight pressure, and you get a great, great shave, and they do have some twist adjustability to them, which is what I really, really like, but the filament is different. So, Christopher, thank you very much for pointing this out. All the more reason <laughs> for me to add it to my collection, because it's different from the Monster Slants. So, thank you so very, very much for pointing this out, really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll have a link to the filament razor uh, from Phoenix Shaving uh, in the description below. And again, once more, thanks again to Christopher Devine for uh, pointing this out and uh, being so very, very perceptive on this. Really do appreciate it, Christopher. And again, and yes, again, once more, you've given me a great excuse to get another razor for my shave den, uh, the filament from Phoenix Shaving. Thanks again, Christopher. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Rodney Ripplinger sent along the following. Hi, Mark. I'm thinking of buying a new razor. My two possible choices at this time are the Mula R89 Twist and the Mercur Futur. What are your thoughts on either of these choices? Is the Mercur Futur harder to shave with than, say, a Mula R41? Well, uh, I have a Mercur Futur. I do not have a uh, Mula R89 Twist. I have the Mula R89. And if the Mula R89 Twist is anything like the Mula R89, it's going to be a beautifully mild razor, an everyday razor. Uh, that's going to deliver just a beautiful, beautiful, comfortable, smooth shave. You're going to get anywhere from a darn fine shave to a BBS shave, depending on the number of passes and blade you use in that razor. Uh, the Mula R89 Twist, of course, is a two-piece razor. We mentioned it earlier in the, uh, in the podcast. The base plate of that R89 head is attached to the handle, and the cap just drops onto it, and that threaded stud... Uh, attaches uh, via a knob that is on the bottom of the handle that you twist to uh, tighten and loosen that cap, which is why it's called the R89 twist. The only experience I have with a twist razor is the uh, Storm Razor from Global Shave Clubs, also known as Swiss Shave today, uh, that was sent to the channel uh, courtesy of uh, Sheldon Quinn. Thank you again, Sheldon. Really do appreciate it. And I'm holding it here in my hand. And it's similar to the R89. I don't know if it's actually based or cloned from the R89. But uh, boy, I sure do like this one a lot. And if the R89 is anything like the Storm, uh, it's a terrific razor. I like the, um, the two-piece configuration and the twist because uh, it really does a nice job of holding the uh, cap and the base plate together and making sure that the blade is secure. Again, if the R89 twist is anything like the R89, and I'm sure it is, it's going to be a nice, mild shave. I think the only difference is, is it's going to be a little heavier than the R89. The handle is going to have a little more material, I think, from what I can see in photos. So it's going to give you a nice, nice, mild shave. Now, the Mercur Futur. Uh, this was one of the first adjustable razors that I purchased when I came back to the traditional wet shave. I bought mine used because the original owner, and I can't remember who it was now, the original owner used it once and didn't like it. Now, on paper, the Futur is rated as a rather aggressive razor. 
Uh, I do not use this razor above level three. It adjusts from one to six. I don't use it above level three. And although it is rated on paper as being on the aggressive side, I have found it to be very, very smooth, delivering some really, really nice shaves. And I can't remember ever nicking myself with this razor. However, I think I was using uh, blades that were a bit on the milder side that had uh, some nice platinum and chromium coating to them to where those edges were softened a little bit so that the, uh, the Futur delivered uh, a little more of a, a milder quality of shave, so to speak. Uh, it really is a terrific, a terrific uh, a razor. A lot of wet shavers out there regard it as a shaving instrument because it is so very well made. It is so beautifully, beautifully chromed. It is a smooth handled razor. Uh, and there is a little bit of an indentation about, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, not quite halfway down the uh, handle from the razor head that affords you a little more of a grip uh, to it. But it really is a smooth handled razor. The razor head is smooth and it's also a two-piece razor head configuration. I'm just going to flip that cap off here. I don't know if you can hear this. There it is right there. And the cap has a couple of posts uh, on it and it just snaps into the base plate which is attached to the handle. I'll just snap it in like that. There you go. Snaps in like that. So loading a blade is pretty straightforward. The end tabs of the Razor blade are enclosed in the cap, but you have to be very, very careful when adjusting this razor during a wet shave. Because of its smoothness on that razor head, if you're holding the razor head with your index, with your index finger and your thumb, and it's slick up there, and you turn that handle, the potential for that razor head to slip out of your, out of your hand, out of... Uh, slip out of the index finger and the thumb uh, and flip around uh, to the blade, exposed blade edges uh, is a very, very real possibility. And you could give yourself a terrible, terrible cut because of that. If you use this razor, uh, I recommend one of two methods to adjust it uh, while you're doing your traditional wet shave. The first one uh, is uh, if the palm of my hand, of my opposing hand, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm holding the razor in my right hand and my left hand is open. Uh, if the palm of my left hand is dry enough, I will take the razor head, the crown of the razor head, and just uh, hold it against my left palm or press it against my left palm. And that way, using pressure, I can then adjust the handle up or down so that uh, even if it slips a little bit in my palm of my hand, uh, there's no chance of that razor uh, cutting my fingers, <laughs> nicking my fingers at all. Uh, everything is, is clear in a way, so to speak. Uh, but the other method, which is uh, more reliable and more safe, is just to get uh, a nice towel and just wrap it around the razor head and hold it uh, hold the razor head while you're holding a towel and adjust it that way. That's probably the easiest, safest way to do it because it can get slick. And if again, if it slips, if that razor head slips out of your hand, you're going to get yourself a terrible, terrible cut. And I've been on forums where wet shavers have talked about that and they have said, you never do it twice. <laughs> Once is enough to remember to never do it. And uh, Mark Bagwell reminded me of this during a recent discussion. And um, you know what? I haven't used the razor in such a long time. I probably would have forgotten. So my thanks to Mark Bagwell for that reminder. But I have found the Mercur Futur to be a very good razor. I use it on the mild side. And again, there's more to uh, the aggression of a razor than just blade gap. There are some other things that come into play. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but on paper, the blade gap is uh, um, at the different levels can be expressed as being more aggressive than some other razors out there. But I have found that when it's on the milder side, uh, I get a very, very nice shave. I will not turn it up 
above three. Maybe two and a half is probably the maximum for me on this razor. But uh, the razor was originally launched in, uh, in 1980, and I believe it was designed during the 1970s. So the reason why I keep, I keep this razor is because it's a part of shaving history. And who knows how much longer they're going to be making uh, the Futur. It seems to be um, critically acclaimed, and a lot of wet shavers out there have it and like it. Uh, but um, you know what? I, I, I don't use it as often as other razors, and maybe that speaks to the uh, aggression of it. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a great razor. It looks beautiful. It is absolutely beautifully chromed. It has wonderful heft, beautiful balance. Uh, the razor head can be a little bit um, cumbersome. Some wet shavers find it to be overly large and not as maneuverable as a lot of other razors. I found that to be true when I first started to use it. However, I've become quickly accustomed to it, and I don't find that to be a hindrance at all. Now, if you want to try the Mercure Futur without actually buying a Mercure Futur, there are some clones out there that are very, very well priced, probably in the $15 to $20 range. And the one that I think is probably the best of the clones is the Vander Hagen version of the Futur. It is lighter weight. Uh, and it is calibrated milder than the Futur. So that would be a good introduction to experiencing the feel of a, mutu, of a, of a, of a Futur razor without actually laying down, you know, 80 bucks or so, whatever the Futur is right now. I think, I think it's like 75, 80 bucks on Amazon. And for gold plating, uh, I think it's even a little more. But... Um, so the Vanderhagen, I think, is, is my pick. I've reviewed some of the clones. I've reviewed the Futur. I've used the Futur on the channel. You can you know, seek out those video reviews and check them out. But I think the Vanderhagen is probably one of the better clones, tuned a little milder than the Futur, a little more lightweight. Uh, and again, same thing with that one. Be very, very careful adjusting it while you're doing your traditional wet shave. Um, so uh, you, don't, <laughs> you don't cut yourself accidentally. But uh, yeah, the Futur is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful razor. And I would, um, I would recommend it if you want a fine razor uh, for your collection uh, and something that uh, represents a piece of uh, wet shaving history. Uh, if you're looking for a razor that is, that is functional uh, and something you're going to use every single day, there are a lot of other adjustable razors out there that will do a better job uh, in that uh, arena. But uh, the reason why I hang on to the Futur is because of its historical significance and uh, also because it was one of the first adjustables that, that, I, uh, that I acquired. And um, I, I just think it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful razor. When I first received it, I thought, wow, this is really, really heavy. And since then, I've got, I've acquired other razors that uh, make the uh, Futur uh, look like a lightweight as far as weight, uh, because some of those other razors are, are a little heavier. But um, yeah, it's a great razor. I like it a lot. If you're looking for a razor uh, that you're going to use every single day and that will give you a great shave, Futur might not be it, but it's a great piece of shaving history and one that... I think every traditional wet shaver who likes to collect razors should have in their collection. You can pull it out every once in a while and have a shave with it. Uh, if you want it as a daily uh, razor, a daily shaving razor, uh, I think it'll do the job uh, as long as you keep it on the milder end if you're fair-skinned like me. Obviously, your mileage may vary if you have a more demanding beard. This very well could be <laughs> a perfect razor for you. But um, I would say for a, a new wet shaver, no. <laughs> part of, part of uh, razor history, absolutely. Great to have in the collection and to use every once in a while. So that's my answer, uh, Rodney. If you're looking for a mild razor, the R89 Twist. If, uh, or, or any of the R89s, any of the other, other Moolahs, uh, Moolah razors out there will be uh, milder. Uh, but if you're looking for something that has a little more aggression, a little more growl than the Futur, but uh, 
you know, be careful with it, especially when you're adjusting it during a traditional wet shave. Rodney, I hope that helps, and I hope it helps you to make an informed decision. Please let us know what you decided to do. And I know in my email response to him, I said, you know what, the futur, you know, get the futur. Uh, I'm amending that a little bit, and I hope you hear this, Rodney, because of my discussion with Mark Bagwell, who pointed out some of the <laughs> some of the shortcomings of the futur. Uh, so I've got to uh, I've got to look at my answer again, and I think Mark Bagwell is right. Uh, yeah, you got to be careful with the futur. Great piece of shaving history, but you got to be careful. All right, Rodney, I sure hope that helps. Now, before I get out of here, I'm going to recommend a movie. Uh, this is a terrific, terrific movie. Let me just say up front, it's rated R, so there is some language in there. Uh, it's called Margin Call. I can't remember if I've ever recommended this movie. If I have before in the past, my apologies for repeating myself, but it really is worth a look. It's a terrific, terrific drama. It stars Kevin Spacey, Paul Bettany, Jeremy Irons, Zachary Quinto, and Stanley Tucci. And it takes place over a 24-hour period during the financial crisis of 2007-2008. Uh, and this investment, this Wall Street investment bank is, it discovers that they have all these toxic assets and how, well, what are they going to do? That's the, what are they going to do? And uh, it really is terrific. Uh, dialogue is great. Acting is great. Uh, and uh, Zachary Quinto plays a, um, I guess you could say he's an, al an, an, al an analyst. Uh, and he's looking at numbers and what's happening. And he stays in the office late one night while everyone else is uh, going out uh, to uh, kind of relax out on the town. And he discovers this huge uh, pool of toxic, toxic assets. And it's going to melt down. And he starts calling people to get them back into the offices. And now everyone's scrambling over a 24-hour period. So it goes up one level to some other executives who look at it. And it goes up another level. They call in some other executives to look at it. And then they finally bring the big guy in to sit down in the boardroom and say, well, okay, what are we going to do about this? It really is terrific. And there is a great shaving scene in the movie, in the executive washroom, where one of the executives is, is shaving. And uh, I think he's using a cartridge razor. And I'd like to get a closer look and, and see what kind of handle is on that cartridge razor. Since we've been talking about the Mula razors, uh, Mula offers some really, really high-end handles for both the Fusion cartridge razors and the Mach 3 uh, cartridge razors that are just gorgeous, but they are very, very expensive. And I'm wondering if they have something like that uh, that this actor is using just for authenticity purposes. You, you, you figure a Wall Street banker, Wall Street investment banker would use a very high-end handled cartridge razor. That's what I'm thinking. So uh, I'm going to have to take a, a look at that scene again. But uh, a terrific, terrific movie from 2011, uh, Margin Call. It's an American drama, and it's very, very well done. Uh, it is very, very engaging. And again, it's rated R, so uh, beware of some strong language being used throughout the film. But very, very well done. From 2011, Margin Call, starring Kevin Spacey, Paul Bettany, Jeremy Irons, Zachary Quinto, Demi Moore, and Stanley Tucci. And that wraps up another Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or a friend. My thanks to everyone who commented and contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, Please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.